Passion Sunday. We're getting to Passion Tide today. Good to be here again in Tennessee, Manchester. And here are the epistles taken from St. Paul's letter to Hebrews, chapter 9. Brethren, Christ being come in and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, neither by the blood of goats or of calves, but by his own blood, entered once into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of a heifer, being sprinkled to sanctify such as are defiled, to the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Ghost offered himself unspotted unto God, Cleanse our conscience from dead from dead works to serve the living God. And therefore he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death, for the redemption of those transgressions which are under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Gospel, taking that according to St. John, chapter 8. At that time Jesus said to the multitude of the Jews, which of you shall convict me of sin? If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. Therefore you hear, you hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, Do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you have dishonored me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. And many men I say to you, If any man keep my word, he shall not taste death forever. The Jews therefore said, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If any man keep my word, thou shalt not, he shall not taste death forever. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father that glorifieth me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you have not known him, but I know him. And if I shall say that I know him not, I shall be like unto you, a liar. But I do know him, and do keep his, and do keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced that he might see my day. He saw it and was glad. Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say unto you, Before Abraham was made, I am. They took their, their stones therefore to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Thus are the words of today's holy God. There are many signs, in the roads, announcements, in the radio, and on the TV and the internet. Avoid unnecessary contact. Avoid unnecessary travel. And of course, remember, do your part. Stay apart. And don't forget about the fact that there is another announcement that says each place, see that uh, butcher place back at home in Kentucky there, another place put advertisements. We're all in this together. Stay apart. We're all in this great crisis together. This terrible great crisis. The coronavirus. Great health crisis. Only necessary travel should be had. Only necessary contact should be made. I heard again just read on the radio, and also heard a little bit before, the clergy trying to get to some faithful, to go and see them, to see their, their sheep in the hospital. No. Nope. Not allowed. In some cases, there's police there to make sure that this unnecessary contact is not made. And there is a great 
rejoicing that's done in the main, main media because we're seeing people come together. We're seeing people uh, show that their social responsibility. We want to make a new law in Wisconsin that says that if you find your neighbors are not socially responsible, you see a lack of social distancing, then you can call a number and call the police. Make them be socially responsible. And we're seeing the people of the world and governments work together on this. The police are doing such a wonderful job. They're keeping people in their houses. They're blocking the streets. It's, the whole thing is wonderful. The media is doing a wonderful job. They were instilling the fear of a virus into people's souls, a most terrible fear. Now, some might complain and say, you know what? There's fear mongering going on. I don't like to see people creating not necessary fear. Have the tables turned? Once upon a time, what happened? We used to learn the fear of God. Now, we have the fear of an unseen virus. More importantly, the fear of the police, the fear of the soldiers, the fear of the law, the fear of the government. And there's a lot of gratitude in the liberal media about it, how wonderful it is. We're going to say, thank God for 2020. Thank God that God is no longer necessary anymore. And who are the ones that agree that God is not necessary anymore? Who are the first ones to close the doors of their churches, say that we should not be together? There's an official decree made by our beloved superior in the Senate of St. Pius X, the very first week of the announcement of this so-called crisis in which we are. Make sure you don't cough. It used to be a mortal sin to commit adultery. Don't worry about that. Just don't cough. <laughs> now it's a mortal sin to cough. It used to be a mortal sin to not be with a woman that's to be with a woman that's not your wife. But there's a more serious sin, it's called shaking hands. Because if you shake hands, you might spread the virus. Clergy used to tell young people, when you see little Miss Beautiful Buttercup, keep social distancing. Because if you're not socially distant, you're going to end up in trouble. But now we're told to be socially distant when we go to church. And we're told to be socially distant when we go to the marketplace. What about the social distance of sin? Don't worry about that. What's necessary? Many are worrying now about starvation, and some are beginning to starve because they can't go to the store and get food because they're terrified when they do get to the store, they're not the ones, they're like the man in the gospel. There was once a man in the gospel, he had a little bit of a debilitation. He could not walk well, he was partially paralyzed. He wasn't completely paralyzed, he was partially paralyzed. And there was a miraculous pool in which an angel would come from time to time and he would move the waters of that pool. And the first man to get in the water after the pool, when the water was moved by the angel, would be cured. Now, he had been in the pool for many, many years. When the water would be moved by the angel, he would get up and start hobbling to the pool. But someone else was very sick. Body was faster than him. And someone else always got in the water before he did. One day the Lord came and saw him and said, what's your trouble? Because I'm debilitated, I'm partially paralyzed. I stay next to this pool where the angel comes sometimes and moves the water. And whenever a person gets into the water, 
our first. He's cured. But I'm not fast enough. And there's no one to help me. There's no one to pick me up and place me in the pool first. And though I've been here many years, I have never been cured. And the Lord said, go thy way. At the end of the story, a true story, thy faith has made thee whole. What's necessary? Imagine that you're one of the billions of angels in heaven right now. Before the throne of God. Imagine you're one of the millions of saints in the presence of God, looking at him face to face, of all those that have died a beautiful death in grace, and now have been seeing God face to face. Imagine you're one of the millions of those in purgatory who died with the grace of God, but not with a perfect sorrow, and are wiping away your sins in the church militant or rejoicing with God in the church triumphant, or being with God as an angel in his presence. And you look down at the earth in the year of our Lord, 2020. And they don't need God anymore. There is a tyrannical one-world government that they're trying to put upon us. There's communists, there's bad guys, there's Bilderbergers, there's the CFR, there's police with guns, and they want to institute a one world order and enslave the whole world. Is that the problem? St. Basil says, no, that's not the problem. St. Basil says, look at the leaders in the year 30 A.D. in Israel. One was called Pilate. Another one was called Herod Agrippa. Another one was called Caiaphas. Another was called Annas. Come forward three years. Let's look at the leaders in Israel. One is called Pilate, another is called Herod, another is called Caiaphas, another is called Annas. It's the same guys. And St. Basil points out, in the year 30, were they wicked? Oh yes, 33, a little bit because of habits, but they were essentially the same wicked. Would they have behaved differently in 30? put under the same pressures than they did in 33, exactly the same. Were they ready to crucify Christ? Of course they were. Herod chopped off the head of John the Baptist to fulfill the promise he made in a bet to an impure girl who just danced before him. He would have no problem bringing about Christ's death. Pilate was just as interested in his own expediency in the year 30 as he was in 33, and he was just trying to get by and Caiaphas and Annas hated Jesus Christ with the fullness of their being. What's different? St. Basil says, there is one thing that changed between the year 30 and the year 33 AD, and that's the crowd. The crowd had turned into a mob. And the crowd was no longer a crowd, for a crowd is a gathering of people for various reasons. There's nothing wrong with a crowd, just a bunch of people get together. Somebody is going to buy pizza, somebody is going to buy car parts, somebody is going on his way to see his children, someone's going to church, some are going to do evil things. Many good things, many indifferent things, they're just together. This crowd is not in itself evil. But know this about the crowd, says St. Basil. It is the place where we meet Jesus Christ. We see him on the mountain of Beatitudes. We see him performing miracles. We see him in his holy church. One man in my own priesthood, I remember, 
He had left the Catholic Church after Vatican II. He was doing wicked and evil things involved, in fact, in murdering babies for the government as a doctor. Though he was not a doctor. He had gone crazy in his atheism and insanity. And he was in the city of Chicago. And he was walking down the street and contemplating, that's it, I can't take it where I'm going to commit suicide. And he walked by an old Catholic church. Stained glass windows and a steeple. And a door that was open. And he walked in. And he saw stained glass windows. He saw statues. He saw a crucifix. He saw Christ. He knelt down and converted. He did not commit suicide. How many souls are going to commit suicide? Saw the report yesterday in 30 minutes. There was a walk into somebody's house and walked out. On the 32nd report. What, two minutes, whatever it was. Fox News, that's the good guys. Mm -hmm. They're the ones you can trust. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a major psychological crisis going on. This coronavirus is terrible, but it's also causing problems to mental health. But fortunately, there are psychologists out there who are willing to go online with you and do a face communication online. Somebody told me, Pope Francis, I didn't check it myself, so I can't verify it. But they said that uh, he's saying you can go to confession online now. Mm. I don't think he said that, but wouldn't be surprised because he counts a heresy a day. It could have been one from a few days ago. <laughs> but the fact is, we got to have contact, and so you can actually type in mental health professional for only $13.99, $19.99, $20.99, make sure your credit card is working. And then you get your mental health advice, and they gave advice. One of the tips was avoid that. Naps. So if you're in, if you're stuck in your house, avoid naps because if the naps cause depression. So avoid naps. Beware of naps. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> Another thing you have to make sure you do if you want to be safe, make sure that you have a schedule. You want to have a schedule. Like for instance, maybe get up in the morning and do nothing all day in your house and go to bed at night. <laughs> schedule. <laughs> and then of course. There are other things you can do in order to avoid this mental health crisis, and that is get dressed. Don't walk around in your PJs all day. Mm. <clears throat> Another thing you can do to stay mentally healthy, change your clothes often. I remember one time visiting a house. Mm. I was a little girl. I visited a house, and there was a girl came downstairs, a 12, 13-year-old girl, a little bit of the slightly vain type, perhaps. She came down and she had a blue dress. I turned around five minutes later, she had a green dress. I turned around, she had a red dress. And she had this, but yeah, I don't know how many clothes she had, but there was a lot. <laughs> and she changed many times. She's mentally okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are some other things you can do to make sure you stay mentally healthy. Because you see, there's a crisis going on. It's good to see that people are avoiding naps and having a schedule changing their clothes and getting out of their PJs. Mm. It's also very important, if you want to be responsible, make sure that you wash your hands. Mm. That's really important. You'll feel so much better when you wash your hands. You may have heard of a guy named William Shakespeare. Mm. Catholic and wise man. He spoke about somebody who washed their hands all the time. Her name was Lady Macbeth. She was far more wicked than her husband and was responsible for murder. But she looked so nice and she seemed so wonderful and she would not be guilty. But what did she do? She washed her hands every quarter of an hour. Nietzsche talked about the washing of hands. She said, we have killed God. God is dead. How much water is needed to wash away the sin of killing God? Will it not take me to be a pretty wise man? Speaking of our modern age, 
he hated God, and he did a very wise thing for one that hated God. He went nuts. The Eugene says, it's the only logical thing that Nietzsche ever did. <laughs> he went crazy. He went totally crazy. And at the end of his life, this wise man in the modern world, if you're intelligent, you know about Nietzsche. If you're not, you don't. And either way, it's good to not know about him. <laughs> he pounded the keys of the piano, smashing them, cursing and shrieking in the skies. He's one of the great wise men of our age. He just wasn't good on a piano. <laughs> now the fact is, it's good to see there are so many steps being taken to deal with this coronavirus, and it's good to see the governments out there. It's good to see social distancing. We stopped at an establishment on the way down here. I think it's called Mix Something. They're famous for hamburgers. I don't want to say the name in order to protect the innocent. <laughs> we stopped at one of these establishments in order to get a cup of coffee and a... Uh, whatever those things are called that might give away the name of the establishment. <laughs> and there are lines. Number one, number two, number three, number four. Red tape on the line. I never saw red masking tape before, but a lot of it's very popular. Red masking tape. Mm. Somebody comes in. I'm sorry, but you got to keep your social distance. Everybody's got to be six feet away from each other. Lady said that. And when she said that, I saw a man about one foot from her with a hamburger in her hand, his hand. Mm. Another one about 12 inches, a little more than a foot, good two feet away. They were walking around breathing on each other. That was in my car. It wasn't socially distanced. Terribly worrying. If only they were responsible. And when you make the hamburger, you make a hamburger. And then what you do is you toss it <laughs> to the person that's six feet away, and they toss it to the next person, then you catch it. Those that aren't good at sports, I'm sorry, you can't eat. <laughs> now the fact is, we've got to be responsible. It's so important, and it's encouraging to see people be responsible. Where does God fit in that responsibility? Nowhere. And what about the priests of the church? And what about the bishops of the church? What are they doing? They're closing their doors. That's got to make the angels happy. Hmm. How responsible they are. And what did our superior say? Before this whole thing expanded, there were, there were no laws that say you have to do these things. No more sick calls. Because after all, we became priests in order to be safe and healthy. Mm. Why would I want to go into a hospital? Mm. I get sick there. Mm. Why would I want to stop in a car accident, which is an unsafe place? Where do chaplains go in war? called the front lines. What part of the front lines? The part where the bullet made contact with human flesh. Not the part where they missed. Is God happy? That he doesn't have to be so busy anymore? He's not needed. He can take a vacation. The state will handle it, the police will handle it, the medical professionals. Where does everybody die and stay dead? Call the hospital. <coughs> Filipino hospitals are wonderful places. I had one, one hospital in the Philippines, I thought it was very well designed because they had the check-in right here and right behind it was the morgue. <laughs> Because usually you have to check in, go to the bed, die, then go to the morgue. This saved a lot of trouble. Check in, straight to the morgue. This is a good design. 
well designed Filipino hospital. You can go in half the eight foot and die there. <laughs> now the fact is, everybody's dying of the coronavirus. What if you don't die of the coronavirus? Guess what? You're gonna die. <laughs> I was doing fine before this virus started. I only had stage five cancer and three little lead poles in my heart <laughs> from the neighbor. <laughs> I was doing pretty dang good, but the virus hit. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Now the fact is, somehow God isn't necessary anymore. We don't need him. I wonder if he's happy about that. Mm. Forget about the Bilderbergers, forget about the CFR, forget about the police, forget about the guys with the machine guns, forget about all the laws they're trying to implement. They haven't implemented them yet. They don't need to. Because man wants to be in sin, and man wants his heaven here on earth, and he doesn't want his heaven in heaven. And my heaven on earth is being disturbed. God can't fix my heaven on earth. But the police can. That loving government can. Those wonderful things you call politicians can. All of the leaders of the government, the secret world order, they can do things. We want to be saved by our state. We want to be saved by man. And what does it say in the sacred scripture? God will mock. That's what it says. When that shall come upon you, what you have feared. You fear the loss of your money. You got a 401k plan. You fear the loss of your health. You fear the loss of your whole wide world. You feel un you fear unsafety. I will laugh when you shall lose, and that will come upon you what you have feared. What is it that we are supposed to fear? We are supposed to fear eternal damnation. And what is necessary? The love of God. The love of God fills my heart. The love of money doesn't work. The love of health doesn't work. The money goes on to someone else. The health disappears. Everybody, so many people are on a crusade. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the time will come when those who kill you think you're doing a service, they're doing a service to God. I wonder if now that time. <laughs> Maybe it's now the time. What's well, a tragedy? There have always been bad kings. There always will be. There have always been bad bishops and bad priests. There always will be. There's always been bad rulers, bad police officers, bad judges. Not all are bad, but there have always been bad ones, and there always will be, and there's never a vacancy. <laughs> One dies, another one takes his place. Don't worry about that. Mm. What is it that governs us? Do we love God or not? Is he necessary for me or not? And the priests on their own are saying, we're not going to have mass. And the priests on their own are saying, we're not going to go and do sick calls. Because it's not safe. Without being commanded to do so. And the Pope has already canceled Holy Week. It's good because it's modernist Holy Week. But it's not good because he's sending a message to the whole world that the chief man of God is letting the whole world know we don't need God. You think heaven is happy? <laughs> we must remember that we are made for God, and He is necessary. And what is the definition of necessary? You have necessary, something necessary which cannot not be. If you have, want to have health, you cannot be without air. So air cannot not be. If air is not around, you're going to die. Scientists study very carefully in NASA what things cannot not be, if we're going to send men into space, 
Because what is needed for men to be alive isn't up there. So we're going to create a space suit. And in the space suit, we're going to provide whatever is necessary to stay alive. So that men can go in space. What is necessary to us to live? It's the grace of God. You know that social distancing makes an invalid confession. And social distancing is an impossible anointing. And social distancing means you can't receive Holy Communion. Because you see, in order to have a valid confession, the priest has to hear the confession. And most people aren't as holy as St. Peter Damien, blessed Peter Damien. He became a leper. The priests have to go to confession too. They brought a priest to his island to hear his confession and says, I'm not going next to him, he's a leper. So Peter Damien got into a boat, a little bit of a boat, and he went out next to the big ship where the priest was with about 50 or 60 sailors, men and women alike. And he did his confession screaming out loud. Mm. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And he screamed out his confession so the priest and everyone on the boat could hear it. How many Peter Damians do we have today? Mm. I'm not one. I don't know about you. Are we ready to go and stand six feet away? Everybody in the church, everybody in Africa, everybody right now. Bless me, Father, by our sin. Blah, 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 blah. You did what? <laughs> the Lord God created the confessional where a priest can be next to his penitent. He made anointing so that the spiritual doctor could be there next to the one. When you are dying, do you want to die alone? Just last week, because of the coronavirus, the father of one of our parishioners died alone. Why? Because of this stupid virus. And he didn't die of the virus. They left him abandoned, and he died alone, because he didn't have his medication. And he could have easily have gotten it, but they said, no, he can't be next to this guy, and they left him to die. How many people are dying right now? How many old ladies in their houses, how many old men in their houses, all alone, socially distanced, and they fell in the bathroom, and they can't pull the chain, because there is no chain to pull, and there's no one checking on them, because it's not safe. And they're dying right now during this sermon. How many people are in this state of terror and despair? One of my ladies working in a nursing home facility, not even a nursing home, it's a consistent care facility, where each one has their own individual bedrooms, not even a full nursing home. They're not allowed to go and eat together. They're not allowed to see the other ones. And their families can't come and see them. And the people, these old people, 80 years old, 90 years old, are in absolute terror. They can't see their own children. They can't get together and talk in their own house. They're totally isolated. And then they turn on the TV. Don't worry about the food. But you might touch it and die. But don't worry. <laughs> Be responsible and stay separated. Stay in your room. Be a good citizen. And they're terrified and they're dying alone. And they're not thinking of God. Because they don't need Him. Turns out we still do. Who do you need to see before you die? The priest. Who do you need to see when you're in a time of trouble and worries? You get a call at 3 o'clock in the morning, Father, Father, I'm really feeling bad. My dog died. you got to help me get through this crisis. <laughs> All right. What about St. Blaise? We often mention St. Blaise. They said about Blaise, you could never say no to anyone. 
He was to condemn heretics, a bishop and a priest of God. One woman came to him and said, Bishop Blaze, Father, I need help. You've got to help me. I've got a great crisis. He said, what's the crisis? A wolf came and took my pig. Not serious. A wolf took your pig. I sleep with that pig every day. It wasn't a husband. It was a real pig. Not much difference, but it was a real pig. And so the fact is, she used to sleep with a pig every day, and she loved that pig, and she fed that pig, and the wolf came and took the pig, and it was a serious crisis. You know, Blaze said, you know what? Right now, it's the year 270 AD. Plus or minus. There's Catholics dying everywhere around here. There's people in prison. There's martyrs all over the place. There's blood everywhere. You could put the death of being a Catholic, and you're worried about a stinking pig? <laughs> Is that what he did? What does St. Blaise do? This is a serious crisis. I'm really mad at that wolf. And being a saint, he was able to speak to the wolf. And he said, Wolf, bring back that pig. And he commanded the wolf, and the wolf brought back the pig. And he gave the pig back to the woman. Does it matter to us? The love of St. Blaise for her mommy and her pig. Mm -hmm. Every February the 3rd, we bless throats with candles. My own brother had a miracle of the candles. In the early 1990s, not on February the 3rd, there was a man that was born Catholic but wasn't really living his faith, but he had throat cancer. He said, I want a bit of Blaise bless me to get rid of my throat cancer. <laughs> So we went to my church where my brother was in New York, Long Island, where it's illegal to have out-of-state license plates today. I want to have a New York plate for passing that way. <laughs> so what did they do? He went to him and said, Father, I want blaze. He said, Well, I gotta find the candles. So we found the candles, gave the blaze blessing, and he blessed his throat. He went to the doctor the next day, and his throat cancer was gone. He then promised he would live the rest of his days next to that church, which he did until he died because of the candles of blaze. Where did those candles come from in the year 1992? Because that woman went to blaze and said, blaze, I really love my pig. <laughs> and blaze said to the woman, to the, to the wolf, bring back, bring that pig home. And she came and brought him gifts every day. She was so grateful about the pig. <laughs> And she brought him candles. And he said, don't bring me any more candles. I've got enough candles. Mm, thank you. Mm. But what I want you to do is, when I die, go to the church and light a candle and pray for me. And because of saving the pig, and because the priest took the crisis of a little pig as a great crisis, because the heart of that grandma mattered to him. It was important. Now we've had so many miracles of the blessing of throats down the last 1,600, 500 years. Does Jesus Christ only handle big problems? Are they the only ones that are important? If they were, Problems human race wouldn't be on the list because none of us are important. It just so happens that our God loves people with little problems. He's the one that said, when I walk across the fields, I will not step, I will not quench the smoking flax. I will not step on the broken reeds. That's our God. And a priest is supposed to be Alter Christus, another Christ. I wasn't made just to anoint the dying. I wasn't made just to say Mass on Sundays so you can fulfill your obligation. I wasn't made to make you memorize the catechism. The priest was made for every problem. 
It was made to help souls. And to make the journey on this earth a little easier. On the path to a place called heaven. And the priest is supposed to say, don't live for the fullness of this world, but live for the next life. And he's got to say it to priests too. Because we priests happen to like pizza and beer too. We also need priests. My old pastor, Father Hannafin, used to say all the time, priests need priests. And guess what faithful need? Priests. What about the unfaithful? They also need priests. What about the non-Catholics? They need priests. Father, can you bless my dog? I can bless your dog. And why is a priest needed? Because as a man, he's basically useless. He's just another man. Why is he needed? Because he's the mediator between God and man. And when do you need God? You need him for your daily bread. What do we say in the prayer that he taught us? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. Maybe the trucks won't show up tomorrow. Maybe the stores will be empty. There was a woman who only had one bowl of porridge left. And she was about to die. And she said, I will give my last bite to myself. I'll give the last bite to my little brother, my son. And then we shall die. And a prophet came by. His name was Elias. And she told him. He said, woman, what do you have? I'm hungry. What do you have? I've only got a little porridge for myself and my son. I'm going to die. And like a loving prophet, he said, well, that's really great. I'm hungry. You give me first. And afterwards, what's left over you, you eat. And God will provide for you and you will not starve. So she did. And the porridge never ran out. Mother woman had money troubles. Her house would be taken from her. She said, all right, let me fill some oil, jars with oil. And you can go and sell them and pay back your debts. I don't have enough oil. They poured the oil into one jar, and another jar, and another jar, and another jar, and it never ran out until the very last jar, and it filled up the stop, and when there were no more jars, the oil stopped. And she could pay her debts, and she saved her house. What's our trouble? We don't think God is needed. We think our guns are going to protect us. What happens if you miss? One of my other prisoners in Colorado, remember? We all made fun of him for a long time. We gave him the Darwin and Idiot Award. <laughs> he was driving his truck, and there's a prairie dog. He said, I'm going to get that prairie dog. He reached, his, he reached his pistol, and he went to put it on the side of the truck to shoot the dog, but he didn't calculate. He missed the window and shot himself in the leg, sitting in the truck. Absolute idiot. <laughs> He was a good shot, just not that day. <laughs> if he had his main artery, he'd have been dead. Steady hobbled around for six months, and we had a good time making fun of him. <laughs> he was a good shot. Couldn't get the gun to aim out the window that day. <laughs> the fact is, our protection comes from God. Our necessity is Him. In the modern world, actually, without knowing it, many souls, they're thanking God that they don't need God. And God is not happy. Forget about the Bilderbergers and the bad guys. What about the souls? Souls need God. They need to come back to God. And what's duty of the priest of God? Go out to the souls. What about the bishop? What about the Holy Father? What's he supposed to do? He's supposed to lead souls to God. He's supposed to provide a home for these souls. And we are called political and social animals. We are not meant to be socially distant. We're meant to be together. And in the world, would you say that we're all in this together? Stay apart. And it somehow makes sense. Don't worry about a virus. When you die, there'll be one inside of you. 
and can always blame it for the cause of your death. If you don't have a virus, you're going to die anyway. You always have viruses. Don't worry about that. Worry about the knowledge and love of God. Worry about the, the being socially responsible. By bringing Jesus Christ to souls. And by bringing them to all our troubles. Lord, I don't want to just go to heaven. I don't just need you for grace in my life. I need you for my health. I need you to save my little pig I happen to like. I need you to save my pet doggy. I need you for my favorite shoes to be found. St. Anthony, get busy. How many people ask St. Anthony for important stuff? <laughs> I lost my favorite lucky sock. I gotta find it. And St. Anthony takes time out of his busy schedule in heaven to find your crappy lucky sock. <laughs> the most popular saint in India. We always ask the Indians why. Why not say my Savior? Why not St. Thomas? No, we like Anthony. I had many chapels in Anthony. There was a chapel in Anthony. There was a chapel one time. I had two chapels in Anthony in the same town. Had, and not only the Catholics, but the Hindus all come. They love Anthony. Ask them why. The Indians are very practical. We like Anthony because he delivers. The other saints are unreliable. <laughs> you ask that for something, you get it. <laughs> but what happens to us? We must have a little bit of faith. A whole lot of love and we need God for everything our daily bread favorite socks our souls our hearts our pets all of our troubles big and small he wants to hear about every one of them so let's pray the world turns around a little bit God sends crises because of our sins and one reason he sends them is to remind us to turn back to him. Let's turn back to him, not to the foolishness of our modern world. So let's have a blessing of all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.